money and stuff. We we got this in the back of our mind. Because everything with us is supposed to be indefinite. How do you know me being up here is a seasonal? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't supposed to be up here all that time. Yeah. But we got some folks that just don't understand their season. Mm. They won't grow up. They won't agree with God. Right. Y'all said it's going to be good today. Somebody did. <laughs> hey Amen. Hey, look. It ain't no sugar in it, but it's a whole lot of tiny. A whole lot of tiny. And that's that's on purpose. Yes, yes. Because we need some dumb from time to time. Mm -hmm. So we just can't be living in a fucking flower pot <laughs> and our roots are not going deep. Mm -hmm. Another thing, the religious spirit is just carnal mind. It's just a carnal mind attempting to live for God. That is the key. The religious spirit is when our carnal mind is not, our carnal mind is not susceptible to the things of God. You already told us, Paul did, said carnal mind is an enmity, hostile towards God. The part of you that's still in residual form, the part of you that have not come under his government, the part of you in your mind that is not submitted to the word. Submitted to the church, submitted to sound doctrine, submitted to the wisdom of God. That part that's still loosey goosey. <laughs> Amen. The part of you that's just not stable is the part that's resisting God. God got no enemies. He has no more enemies. The only enemy is in us, in our thoughts. That's what Paul told the church in Corinth, right? We gotta bring our thoughts into obedience. It's arguments in our heads that resist God. Because we want to go up another way. When Jesus said, when you go up another way, you're a thief and a robber. In other words, if you don't do it the way God said to do it, then you're illegal. Tell you that bit. Uh oh. Uh oh. I still got 15 minutes. <laughs> so you're not out of the boat yet. The pressure is increasing. Yeah. Huh? I said, you gotta wait till you get to the dock. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth, though, y'all. We we don't understand. We and 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 the sad thing about it, though, uh uh uh, Kathy, the other Kathy, is the longer you've been saved, the worse you can get. If you've been saved a long time, that's why I told people, I, I mean, Apostle Burgess told me a long time ago, he said, Brother Steve, the expiration date on a Christian is 20 years. Yes. And you know what? I looked at all my friends. And you can look at some of the people around you. Yeah. And if you ask them how long they've been saved, I guarantee you they wouldn't pass that 20 year mark. Yeah. And most of them are not even saved. And if they're in a church building, they may be in the building. Amen. I mean, no, you can be in a house, in a, in a house, in a physical church building, and not be connected to God. So you can be in the building, but not connected to the house. And so they got all these years in, twenty years, decades in, and when they get to the whatever mark it is, twenty, twenty-one, two, three, four. They haven't done anything. God gave them two decades. He's no respecter of person. When he gave me, he's given to you. What's the difference between me and somebody else? Two things. The only difference between me, I'm talking about if all of us will put, you know, we all in the same room. The only difference is choices and decisions. We all got the same choices. That's it. I want a better quality of living. I spent 25 years doing what I wanted to do. I almost lost my life. Cop tried to kill me. I ain't supposed to be here. March the 30th, 1990, I ain't, from that point on, I wasn't even supposed to be here. He tried to kill me with a 9 millimeter. Pulled the trigger three times. Didn't go off. Hello, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. I said, God, all right, whatever you want, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. There you go. He even had to take it to the car. I was like, come on, which one? Come on, let's get over with it. Let's do what we got to do. 
I know what's going to happen. It's, at the time, my, my stepson's birthday was that day on that Friday. I said, no. No, I said, oh, Lord, I got to call these people until I won't make it. <laughs> <Go deal. laughs> so almost a year to the day, in April 29th, I had an encounter with God the night before. On the 28th, I had an encounter. That seen the light when I was in prison. Amen. Yes. And I knew it was God. Yes. So ever since then, supernaturally, when God bear witness with my spirit, I'm in my mind, I'm gonna follow. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you can create this placebo in your head of how to serve God. You have to refer to the manual. Mm -hmm. If you can't refer to the manual, if you can't go according to what the scriptures have said, the teaching in the house, the culture in the house. Court values in the house, you are carnal. Bottom line. And you know what they say in scripture, you know what carnal means? In Greek, it's sarkikos. It means meathead. You got a meathead. And you got to understand, the devil likes, he, he likes to eat. His, the, he likes to eat. The serpent has eat. He, likes, he has meat, as it says in Isaiah 65. The serpent's meat is dust. And as we think carnally, it gives him a license. It ain't, the, it ain't God. It's you have opened doors. The hedge is broke. And you've allowed him to have access to your life. Amen. We talked about as well hypocrisy. Oh boy, y'all look like y'all sweating. <laughs> because I told you, most preachers want to talk about sin, the world, the devil, hell. Yeah, yeah, right. That's another one I left off. Yeah, they want to talk about hell. I have never preached the hell message. I almost said something, but I was leave it alone. Y'all ain't growing up. Jesus did <laughs> You know what I was saying, right? Duh. Yeah. Duh. With it.
go to the city on the weekend. Yeah, I don't know if you should dip on the city on the weekend, but <laughs> they ain't nice down there right now. But you go different places, and you get on a plane, you get on a train, you go here, you go there, and a lot of movement, to and fro. But we haven't gotten to the point where we need to ask God, what is your expectations for my life? Most of the church has not surrendered. We haven't known what lordship is. We don't know what lordship is. Truly. We say it out our lips. No, really not. Our lifestyle is not indicative of it. Tell your neighbor, our lifestyle is not indicative of it. See? Because, see, we can't continue to be Christian in our theology and an atheist in our living. Most of us are atheists. Born again. Amen? Spirit filled. Tongue talking. Fire breathing, devil chasing, and our, and, and, and our lingo is deep. Our language is deep. That's some shallow stuff, man. You know, I ain't even enticed with it. I told you, when I get revelation from God, I, I, I'm not even enamored with it. I used to be, like I told, talked about earlier, when, we, when myself and my sister were gospel groupies. <laughs> we was groupies trying to find the next... Uh, uh, Wine train coming, you know, not literal wine, but the next season and impartation. I used to be enamored with that. We used to bring them here. Remember, we used to import people uh, when we first started the church, and we bring in all these brand names in. Remember the day? Some of y'all old heads remember that? I was excited. Then, then I look back and find out we had those fantastic meetings, but people, it didn't produce fantastic people. So you can have a good word. You can be very committed to what you carry, but there's no divine transfer. And, 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 and sometimes it's on the receiving end. Because we've uh, become Christian in our theology and not necessarily, uh, and we still are atheists in our living. 